Would Senator Curran please yield for a question? Senator Curran will yield. Senator McEwen. Thank you, Senator Curran. Um, my question is, Senator Curran, do you believe, <laughs> do you believe, I'm sorry, just a second here. Thank you. No worries. Um, so my question is, Senator Curran, um, uh, is it your intention, I'm, I'm trying to get my mind around what this bill is trying to do here. So um, is it your intention that someone who is accused of a violent crime in our state, you have this list of, of crimes of violence against people, some of the worst crimes, is it your intent that people accused of such crimes should not be allowed to post a bail to be released pending their trial? Senator Curran. Mr. President, um, this does not remove the ability to post bail. In fact, it doesn't have any imposition. What it does is it collects the data necessary so we understand how that bail organization or how that charitable bail organization is functioning and the ability or the responsibility that comes with posting cash bail, especially in the conditions when it's a violent criminal, violence, especially a, you know, violence against a person. Um, and, and again, the, the conditions or the path that they've been on appears to be the most um, risk for the citizenry of the, of the state. They're posting no condition bail. Bail, right, the judicial system's working, and uh, it is not the intent to remove the ability to post bail and to, and to capture bail. It's to remove it from this organization with no oversight or concern about the process and, and knowing who posted it and what risk it puts the citizenry at when you post no bail or no condition bail um, for this type of organization, for somebody in one of those violent categories listed in the bill. Senator McEwen. Thank you, Senator Cran. Um, will Senator Cran yield for another question, please? He will continue to yield, Senator Thank McEwen. you. Thank you, Senator. Um, so I guess my follow-up then is, so, so this bill doesn't prohibit the posting of a no conditions bail, is that correct? Senator Curran. Mr. President, for a charitable bail organization, for those, um, those that are listed in the risk or the violent category, it would prohibit it through a charitable bail organization. It does not prohibit the posting of bail through a traditional bail bonds. Senator McEwen. Thank you, Senator Curran. Um, so what this really comes down to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of bring this back here, is that in Minnesota, under our state constitution, People, Minnesotans, who are accused of a crime, except for a capital offense, except for the most serious murder criminal offense, have a constitutional right to have a bail, a no condition bail, named by the judge. So in each case that comes before a criminal court in Minnesota, the judge will name an amount of bail based on a variety of conditions, the seriousness, seriousness of the crime, the chance that the person may not come back to appear again, all sorts of different um, things to consider, the judge will set a no conditions bail. What that means is that person can themselves or their family, or they can work with a bail bonds person to post that money bail and then pending the outcome of their case, pending their trial, they will be free with no conditions to go home, to prepare their case for trial, to be with their family, to work a job, to do the things that they need to do in their life. Minnesotans who are wealthy people can post large amounts of no condition bail, and they do. 
The Minnesota Freedom Fund is doing God's work. I'm going to say that again. The Minnesota Freedom Fund is doing God's work. And I thank them. I worked for a public defender for the state of Minnesota public defender system, and I saw this injustice day in and day out. Most of the people going through our criminal system are poor. They and their families do not have the financial resources to post a cash bail. And let me go back just for a little lesson here for all of my colleagues. Oftentimes, so the judge constitutionally has to set a no condition money bail amount. And then, in addition, oftentimes, a judge will also set a lower bail amount or a no bail amount with the option that a person could be out on a supervised release program with conditions. That it might include monitoring, it, other supervision, checking in with a, a probationary office, that sort of thing. Oftentimes, my clients could not afford to post even the lower bail amount. That means that poor Minnesotans are stuck in our county jails while they wait for the outcome of the trial to determine whether or not they are found guilty of what they are accused of. That can take months. That can take longer than a year. They are locked up waiting for their trial. They are only accused at that point. And I hear this talking about violent criminals, and I think everybody, of course, of course we're concerned about safety. I'm concerned about safety, too, if a wealthy person who has been convicted previously of violent crimes is accused of another and then just posts their bail and goes free. I'm concerned about that, too. I'm concerned about what they're going to do. But they have a constitutional right to that bail and they post it, and then they're free pending the outcome of their trial. That is how our Constitution works. Those are our rights. So what you're doing here is you're setting up and reinforcing what we already have, which is a two-tier system. Constitutional rights and guarantees for the wealthy, and authoritarianism and jail for the poor. It's wrong. Again, the Minnesota Freedom Fund is doing God's work. They saw this injustice happening repeatedly. It happens every day in Minnesota. And they gathered people together and they said, it doesn't have to be like this. We can raise money, we can post the bail just like a wealthy person would do. So, Senator Curran, I say, if you're going to go this route, you're going after the Constitution. Are you going to prohibit wealthy people also from posting a bail with no conditions? I'd like to see you try. That's unconstitutional. There's also in Minnesota a right to privacy for who posts the bail for someone. We just saw that in the Chauvin trial very, very large bail amount posted by an anonymous person. You think my clients at the public defender's office had that luxury? They didn't until the Minnesota Freedom Fund came along and it was able to help them. So yes, there will be instances anytime someone is accused of a crime, it is possible they could post the bail and pending the outcome of their trial, they could commit another crime. And that's horrible. It's scary. But under our system, we have a constitutional right to be able to post bail and to be free pending the outcome of our trial. What the Minnesota Freedom Fund and other organizations do is ensure that right is extended also to the poor. We know in Minnesota that our criminal system is grossly disproportionate in the way that it deals with class and race. I've seen the numbers from up in Duluth, in St. Louis County, and it's appalling. 
Almost all of the people going through our criminal courts qualify for the services of the public defender. In order to qualify for the services of the public defender, you have to be very, very poor. You have to be in a situation where there is no way that you could possibly afford to hire your own attorney. I think it's upwards of 90% of the people going through the court system up where I was practicing qualify for the public defender. So what this bill does is tell that small number of people accused of whatever crime, yeah, you people, you go ahead and you lean on your wealthy aunt or you take your money from your special trust fund or you do whatever you got to do and you post your bail and you be free. But the rest of you poor saps that are getting help from this nonprofit, that's bad. We're going to keep you in jail, even though really that's unconstitutional. There's so much I could say about this. We need to eliminate cash bail. And in fact, there is a movement around the country to do just that. Illinois just took the leadership on that and eliminated cash bail just earlier this year. Cash bail punishes the poor, and the effect that it has is reinforcing the racism and the classism in our criminal systems. This bill, far from addressing the problems with cash bail, actually exacerbates it and makes it worse and tries to take a swipe at the people who are trying to make things better. So my colleagues, I implore you to think deeply about both our constitutional rights, how they are applied to different people within our communities, and I know all of you, and I hope all of you, treasure the notion of fairness within our system. Please vote for fairness. Don't vote out of fear of criminals. Because the effect of this bill is unfairness. So I ask for a no vote on this bill. Thank you.